Hello. Let's solve together a very uh, important genetics exercise. Our exercise is dealing with hemophilia B, which is a recessive disease, as the title says. This is our pedigree, which shows in the legends uh, some uh, normal uh, males, normal females, which are not uh, shaded. And the shaded uh, individuals, as you can see, are only males. These are the hemophilic individuals. And we can also notice the presence of some carrier females. And the ones that are crossed are the ones that passed away. Regarding the first question, pick out two other names of hemophilia B disease. As you can see, they have uh, told us that the blood clotting, this is the text uh, given as document one. Uh, blood clotting is a process known as cascade of blood clotting since a number of 10 proteins called clotting factors are successively activated by each others in order to stop bleeding. Hemophilia B, which is also called factor 9, so this is the other uh, name for the hemophilia uh, B disease, deficiency or Christmas disease, so this is the second uh, name given for the hemophilia B and in this way we will be answering the first part of the question. It's a genetic disorder caused by missing or defective factor 9, which is a clotting protein. Although it is passed down from parents to children, about one third of cases are caused by a spontaneous mutation, a change in a gene. The main medication to treat uh, hemophilia B is concentrated fix product. <coughs> And uh, the second uh, part of this question is to pick out two sources of the fixed product. Okay, so uh, we have reached here uh, cold clotting factor or simply uh, factor, recombinant factor products which are developed in a lab through the use of DNA technology. So this is the first source of the fixed product. Um, preclude the use of a human donor sourced plasma. So this is the second, uh, the second uh, source of the fixed product. And while plasma derived fixed products are still available, approximately 75% of the hemophilia community takes a recombinant fixed product. So in the pick out, you simply pick out, a copy and paste the uh, data they are asking for. As for the second question, show that the gene of hemophilia is located on the non-homologous segment of chromosome X. So they are already telling us that the gene responsible for hem hemophilia is located on chromosome X. This is our pedigree again. We're supposed to prove this. First of all, the first thing you're supposed to say is that, as you can see, the only affected individuals in this pedigree are males. So this is the first thing that we are supposed to uh, mention. Also, uh, keep in mind that it's given in the title that the hemophilia B is a recessive disease. So uh, we are going to put the symbols. We symbolize the lowercase uh, for the uh, recessive allele responsible for hemophilia and the uppercase for the dominant normal allele. So uh, as we said, the affected uh, members in this pedigree are only males. This is how we know that the uh, disease is definitely sex-linked. And of course, we directly know that it's not autosomal and it's not also uh, located on the homologous segments of X and Y because in, that, uh, in these two cases, we would have noticed the uh, present, presence of uh, females that are affected and it is not the case. So this will lead us to know that the gene responsible for the disease is definitely either located on the uh, non-homologous segment of chromosome X or the non-homologous segment of chromosome Y. If it was on the non-homologous segment of chromosome Y, then you have to choose any affected male and compare his genotype to the genotype of his father. If we want to take into uh, consideration number three, three eight, uh, this male is definitely affected, obviously affected. So his genotype is supposed to be X, Y, H. So the Y allele is supposed to be, uh, the Y chromosome is supposed to be carrying the hemophilic allele. And of course, he's supposed to take this Y chromosome from his father, number two, 
three. But his father's uh, his father's the genotype is supposed to be X Y N because he is uh, normal. So he doesn't have the Y H to uh, to give his uh, son, and so this ha this has led us to the uh, denying of such a case. So we are left that the gene of hemophilia is definitely located on the non-homologous segment of chromosome X. Determine the risk to have an affected boy. In the first part, we're supposed to determine uh, the risk for the couple uh, number 44. Four. This is our female. And uh, knowing that her husband is normal, so as if her husband is normal and the uh, uh, allele responsible for the disease is located on the non-homologous segment of X, this will lead us to know that he, he is uh, of a genotype X, capital N, Y. So uh, we are asked to, um, to determine the risk for this couple, number 44, and her husband was normal to have an affected boy. So for the father to uh, for them to have an affected boy the father has to give his son the y allele so this is a 1 over 2 chance uh, for the father to give the affected allele sorry not the affected allele the y allele to his son for the uh, child to be a male as for the uh, female or the mother number 4 4 Obviously, she has a normal father, so she has definitely inherited the XN from him, and uh, this is why she appears to be normal, since the normal allele is the dominant one. Her mother is a carrier, so the genotype of the mother is supposed to be XN, XH. And uh, since this is the genotype of, the, uh, of her uh, mother, then uh, there is a 1 over 2 risk, uh, a half risk for the mother to give her daughter the XH. In case she has given her the XH, then the daughter has a 1 over 2 chance to give this XH to her son for the son to be affected. So this will lead us to the risk for this couple to have an affected boy is 1 over 2 risk for the mother to have the XH, to inherit the XH from her carrier mother and to give this XH to her son and another half for the father to give the Y allele to his uh, child for the child to be male. So the risk for this couple to have an affected male is 1 over 8. Now what is the risk for the couple uh, 3, 6 and 7? to have an affected male. 3, 6, and 7, as you can see, are both normal, okay? The mother doesn't seem to be a carrier because uh, otherwise they would have placed a point in uh, the circle. They didn't, so she's simply normal. Of a genotype supposed to be pure homozygous, XN, XN. Because her genotype is supposed to be XN, XN, then she will give the XN to all, her, to all of her children and since the allele N is dominant then all her children will be normal. So the risk for this couple to have an affected boy is definitely null, it is zero. As for part number four. Uh, determine, the, uh, determine by referring to documents two, this is document two, and uh, document uh, three, the site of the mutation that led to the mutant allele of the factor uh, nine. Let's go back. <coughs> Let's go back to the uh, exercise to read the given. So they have, they have uh, told us that document 2 shows the restriction sites in a portion of the normal allele of the uh, factor 9 for the enzyme TAC. While document 3 shows the DNA analysis by the southern blood technique of some members of the family in document one. So document two is, is showing a normal uh, allele in which it is uh, caught by the restriction enzyme. And document three is showing the DNA analysis by Southern blood technique of some of the members uh, shown by this pedigree. 
<coughs> okay, so as we said, uh, document two is showing a normal allele which was cut by the restriction enzyme and the result was the three fragments if you can see from the uh, document given that the size of this these fragments is 1.5 kilo kilo uh, bytes uh, 0 0.3 and the third one is 2.7 as for document three which is showing the southern blot technique as you can notice it is showing two fragments one of which having 1.5 kilobyte uh, size or length and the other having 2.7 and the third one which is the 0 0.3 doesn't appear in this electrophorogram as you can notice there is another band which is having the uh, size of a 3 kilobytes so this will lead us to know that the 3 comes from the sum of the 2.7 plus 0 0.3 so this will lead us to know that the mutation has definitely uh, occurred uh, in between the uh, site which is separating these two fragments from each other so this is the site of the mutation uh, that we can notice from this electrophorogram Explain the presence of thick bands in some persons and thin bands in others for certain DNA fragments. We have to keep in mind that when you take a look into an electrophorogram and you're studying a uh, disease carried by the X, which is uh, by the non-homologous uh, segment of chromosome X, uh, then definitely you are going to see some thick bands and this is because the male usually, uh, of course, since the male has only one X chromosome, then he will have only one copy of this, uh, one a copy of this uh, allele which is enough to express to be expressed into the phenotype while the female will definitely have two copies uh, two alleles one on the first x and the second on the second x that she possess as her gonosomes so this explains why uh, are we supposed to observe some thin bands like the ones you can see here and the thick bands like the ones you can see here so the thick bands are overlapping bands uh, restricted for the females because they possess two alleles for this gene while the thin bands are those uh, restricted for the males because they only possess one copy of this uh, gene uh, since they only have one X chromosome specify the abnormality that this girl suffers from now let's uh, go back to the to the exercise in order to know ab what abnormality I, are they asking about so, uh, <clears throat> a prenatal diagnosis permits to realize the southern block technique that reveals the electrophorogram for a girl similar to that of her hemophilic father. So, the uh, electrophorogram was, uh, was uh, examined for a girl and it has revealed that she has the same electrophorogram like her hemophilic father. So, the doctor supposed under the light... <clears throat> of this result that the fetus will suffer from hemophilia of course because she has the same electrophorogram as her father but also she will suffer from a chromosomal abnormality so the question was specify the abnormality that the girl is suffering from okay so because the electrophorogram uh, of this female is similar to her hemophilic father this will lead us to know that she instead of having two X chromosomes the only thing that can explain uh, explain the presence of a electrophoric photogram for a female to be th the same as her father is the absence of the second X chromosome that she is supposed to have so the chromosomal abnormality that she is supposed to be suffering from is Turner syndrome or monosomy X schematize one possible meiosis at the origin of the state of this 
girl uh, of course because we have known that she suffers from monosomy X a case known as Turner syndrome then we are supposed to draw the, we are asked to draw only one of the possible meiosis because many uh, can uh, occur in this um, in this uh, result I have chosen the uh, error during uh, meiosis to be during the second meiotic division as you can see because the first meiotic division is normal this has led to the normal disjunction of the homologous chromosomes while in the second meiotic division which is the equational division the first cell has undergone a normal meiotic division in which the sister chromatids have uh, equally separated into the two daughter cells uh, while in the second uh, cell non disjunction has occurred and the two sister chromatids have both migrated to the same pole and this has led them to be distributed into one cell instead of being distributed into two so uh, this has given us a gamete having two X chromosomes and another gamete having one X chromosome which is the origin for the uh, female we were just talking about thank you very much and i hope that uh, you have enjoyed watching this video